Hi, guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Blondest Podcast. I'm your host, Savannah Boda, and I'm here with my wonderful co-host. Tyler Jacoby. Yeah. I guess I have to say my last name. I really don't like saying my last name. Go follow him on Instagram. Can I just be Tyler? Yeah. Okay. Cool. You can just be Tyler. That makes me feel better. Well, today, you guys, we have an awesome episode for you. And I'm trying to just think like what's been new, what's been exciting. A lot of you guys DM'd me about um, my podcast a couple episodes ago. And like, you really liked the hard side of the industry and just really hearing like my story and um, what I went through. So I think we're just going to do some more personal podcasts like that because it did so well. Everyone really liked it. And I feel like it's so hard on Instagram because I try to be 100%. I am 100% myself on my Instagram, but it is also my business page. So I don't really talk. Like sometimes if I have like a really hard day and I'm like, I just need to get this out there and like just talk about it. Um, I will, but I feel like the podcast is like my space to really talk about personal and deep things and um, really just a good platform for me and for you guys to know me better. I feel that. Yeah. I mean, like any sort of like long content is going to be more personal. Yeah. I feel like. Because Instagram's like short and sweet most yeah. of the time. Like I'll like post a slide about stuff. But um, I really wanted to talk about just today talking about social media standards and just how it affects our mental health and what we can do as a community to, you know, be better for the younger generation. Because I feel like for me as a young adult, like I grew up with Instagram, with social media, like I had a MySpace when I was like seven. Mm -hmm. Did you have a MySpace? Yeah, I would say like MySpace for me was like third, fourth grade. I don't know how old <laughs> oh that is. Oh my God, that's so young. Seven is literally first grade. You think so? I know so. I don't, I'm like, I'm just now learning what ages kids are in certain grades because I have a kid now. So I don't even, like, I was like, when does he even start school? Okay. Like, do those, the government I mean, send you a letter and they're like, hey, enroll your kid? Like, how do you know when it's time? Mom blogs? No. I feel like you have to, the, the, mom blogs, what? Mom blogs, like mom blogs. You just read them and they're like. No, you just, know, you should, That that's just like common knowledge. You think? Yeah, like five, six years old, that's when they start kindergarten. Really? Absolutely. See, I, mean, I never knew that. You went through school. I don't remember. That was like all a blur. Okay. I literally was like, when does Cyrus start school? Yeah, five or six. Yeah, well, that's good. Good to know. Good mm -hmm. to know. But yeah, MySpace, definitely like third or fourth grade. Yeah. It's like honestly so far ago, so long ago mm -hmm. that I can I can barely remember it. Like I know like you had like the little music thing. Yes. And, like you picked your music. And, and then you your friends. So you had like top 10. And yeah, that I, was see, some drama. I don't remember that. I do because I was always in the drama. I mean, I, I, I like vaguely remember it, but it's like I can't picture MySpace anymore. I think there's just been so many more platforms yeah. since then that it's like way yeah. back there. I want to get into mine so bad just to see the pictures I have on there. I bet they like auto. I don't know. I feel like it's I feel like I tried that when I was in high school mm -hmm. and it's like not possible. But so, I also have no idea what email I would have used. See, I tried to get in and I like texted my mom and I was like, I'm pretty sure it was her email because she like, you know. Like, mm -hmm. watched my account, made sure everything was, yeah. like, safe. And she was like, I have no idea. She's like, I probably made, like, a random email for it. Yeah. I don't know. But, like, I feel like with those, I feel like if you're not active for, like, a certain amount of time. They, like, delete it. Probably. I feel that. It's been how many years? God, 20. No, because I didn't have one. It was 20. four. Yeah, like, not 20. But, like, 15. 18. Yeah. A yeah. really long time. Yeah. I don't know. We were, like, the first generation to, like be like born into social media yeah like being a little erring on the side of too young of being on social media mm -hmm. and i think it like i'm i think it made us funnier i think so too <laughs> so it builds character to be on social media but the point is like it's just even for the generation now like just the standards of everything that's so you know curated and so just yeah. seemingly perfect i just remember being you know when i think instagram has changed a lot like the aesthetic of Instagram, you can even see like celebrities are doing it now where it's like the content that does the best is stuff that's not curated. Obviously not in like the aesthetics industry, like everything's so curated on my page. And like, I'm talking about like influence, like influencers, like normal people, like the vibe is almost like this 
effortless like you know photo dumps like that's what people are doing like a picture of like a meal I ate last week and then a picture of my dog in my bed and then a blurry picture of me in a bathroom you know like just it's so like it's to appear more organic and like authentic and like that's it's like almost like tumblr but not as curated as tumblr well I feel like when social media like back in our day, mm-hmm. like middle school and stuff like that, like it was less curated. Like it yeah. wasn't as, and then like it got to this point where it was the influencers I think it's like, and the bloggers. Yeah, I feel like there's like ebb and flow with it because mm-hmm. I'm sure it will get back to where it's like all picture perfect. But I, I vibe with the photo the, dumps. That was my stuff. last post. Remember my like New York post was yeah. just like, yeah, yeah, it was all a shit post. I know, but before like people literally would like put on these photo shoots you know like literally like so curated like I was watching this TikTok of one of these influencers and she was like no like I literally like painted this photo prop and like got a photographer like dressed up my dog dressed up my husband dressed up myself for this fall photo and like that's the shit that I saw like I remember this photo that she was talking about like when I was in high school you know Mm -hmm. and I you don't know the behind the scenes like you think these influencers like live this life every single day and it's just perfect and it's not no. all curated but I mean when you're young like that like you don't think you know now that I'm older I'm like no like obviously like this is yeah. like so planned and yeah. so staged but when you're young like that and you don't know you're just like watching these things and you're like oh my god like she just wakes up perfect every day like these influencers really created the standard of like creating this like faux persona of this like fake perfect life where they have avocado toast in the morning with like their perfect golden doodle and you know they have perfect makeup and you know they're on all these lavish vacations and like there's never a bad day you know like there was never a bad day every day they're put together every day is a great day they're you know whatever and so for me as like a young adult when I was younger like watching these things like it really affected my self-esteem it really made me depressed because I was like, oh, my God, my life's not great. You know, like I don't have this. And I remember I had a friend in high school and she was so obsessed with like taking photos and Instagram. And like she was like really toxic for me because I literally fed into that. And like we would just hang out. But we weren't like it was like almost like there wasn't a real connection between us. We hung out. We took pictures. We sat in bed and we added Edited, the, edited them mm-hmm. on our computers like side by side in complete silence for like three hours so like we'd get, like get together get ready do our makeup go take pictures for like seven hours like in the middle of the woods in flower mound and then we'd go back to our computers and we'd like download all the photos from the, the camera like we had a professional camera that we would like take pictures of each other and then we would just go through and like edit all of our photos on and then what? post them what do you mean like, edit them on what on the computer yeah i don't even know what we used like back then back before then. facetune was yeah, a thing it was something it wasn't like it was like probably like some version of photoshop or adobe okay. something you know but we did that every weekend like for three years did were the pictures good no <laughs> i didn't think so <laughs> uh, like they I, weren't great like i have so many like we like do so much like they're so cringe like they're so bad like it was like the tumblr photo age like that was like the kind of pictures like with the flower crown and then like throwing leaves and like fake laughing like it was like those types of photos that's embarrassing i know but that's what you did back then and i remember just being so obsessed with like getting the best photos and then selfies came okay yeah and then selfies became a thing like the duck face like like that i i I still throw up the peace sign this face Remember when people take pictures like this? Yeah. Oh my God, the mouth open. It's like, I'm, I, the peace sign is hard for me because I literally, I was in a group chat yesterday, you know, the, like with some friends, and I sent a, a selfie because I was showing this like shirt that I bought. Mm-hmm. And I put up a peace sign. And then I like realized how embarrassing that is <laughs> after I was like, I will be 65 years old, still <laughs> throwing up the peace sign. And it's like, for what? You'd be at my funeral, be like, yeah, exactly. With your <laughs> casket, holding it up with one arm. You'll die before me. Statistically. Why? Do women live longer? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, fair. Yeah. That doesn't hurt me. That I hurts know. you. I know. Please don't die. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just so toxic. And so now it just makes me nervous for Cyrus, you know? my son like growing up in this like social media age and I'm glad honestly guys when I found out I was having a boy I was so happy for a plethora of reasons but one 
because of the day and age we live in. Like if you have a daughter in this day and age, like prayers, my hugs and kisses and everything go out to you because I could not imagine. I could not imagine having a girl right now because it is such a hard culture that we live in. And, you know, women are just mean, bully. I mean, guys bully too, but I feel like it's different. Yeah. Like, like, I feel like, like girls have to like align themselves to whatever trend is going on at that moment. Like, Mm -hmm. like what, like bigger lips, smaller lips, less natural, more natural, Mm -hmm. skinny as fuck or like, Ooh, thick. thick. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And guys, it's like basically always the same. Like it's do what you want to do. Like if you're like a thick guy, cool. If you're a skinny guy, cool. Like it's like there's less standards that you have to mold yourself into as a guy. Yeah, and I'm personally scared of the BBL era that's dying down. Because well, good thing you didn't get one. I know, <laughs> but I know I feel bad for all the girls. Like, could you imagine like going and getting spending all this money on surgery just for like the Kardashians to be like, no, it's over. Well, deflate I mean, your ass. Sorry to anyone are. who's gotten one, but like, there there was no reason to ever do that. I mean, I can understand, like, if you I are fl- if you are flat Stanley, like, getting a little bit of, oomph, like, I can understand it. Yeah. But, like, like Kim Kardashian's, like, no offense summer. to you, Kim. But, like, when it's, like, a planet <laughs> behind you, there's no reason for that. That yeah. was too far. It was too far. But that was the standard. And now that they're all taking their BBL out and, like, the 90s aesthetic, obviously, right now, is, like, coming back with, like, the low-rise jeans and, like, it's just scary. It's a scary time for a thick girl. I feel like natural is always the one. Yeah. Like you can't know, go wrong. Like it's not I like, feel you're like it's like, like the teeny tiny standard of like, and that worries me for women because I felt like we were at a point where it was like, it was good to be like a little on the thicker side and like, it was okay. And like, like everyone was accepting of it. And it made me feel not so, cause I honestly wasn't born with a super skinny, like naturally skinny. I'm not a naturally like tiny boned person. Yeah. So, you know, when that was like the standard, like it was just hard, you know, like mm-hmm. my mom, like I remember when like people were like, oh, having a butt's a good thing. My mom was like, no, like when I was growing up, like you didn't want to have it. Like if you yeah. had an ass, like you were fat, like people called you a fat ass. Like that was like an insult. Like yeah. now if you're like, oh girl, you got a fat ass. People are like, oh my God. Yeah, like, they thanks. start twerking. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, but back then, like you didn't want to have like having a big butt was like not a good thing. Like you didn't want that. And so it's just hard for me because I feel like when changes and stuff like that happen, like it makes it harder for women to love their bodies. And it should should be something that like, you know, obviously we're beautiful no matter what, if you're big, if you're small, if you have no butt, if you have a butt, like that's, you, you know, you sh- should feel beautiful and yeah. society shouldn't rule that. But it is scary that the aesthetic right now is like changing and it doesn't mean that's what happens even with houses like the clean bright like white and grays are going out and like color is coming back and now people are doing like green kitchens which I love like it's yeah my whole house obviously is very white and bright because I love that but I love that like color is now coming back into the world but I don't love that like the slim thick era is dying and it's going back to like don't have a butt, don't have boobs, be as small as possible. Because for someone that's gone through like eating disorders and things like that, like it's just very triggering. Now I'm like in a place where obviously like I'm healthier. I'm a mom now. I've gone through therapy. Like I have tools in my toolbox to help me cope through things like this changing. But for younger women, it's Mm -hmm. just very confusing. And it's really hard because you want to be and with the trends and you want to be the ideal body that like celebrities are doing or influencers or whatever it is, you know? Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's just like, I feel like it's always going to be this way. I don't know. Especially like, I like before social media, I don't know what, how things were decided. Mm -hmm. Like, like what people who were in movies or like magazines or something like that. But like, I I I I don't know what podcast I listened to before, but it, like they kind of talked about how trends used to be way longer because like the the feed of information was so much slower. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So like a trend would last for much longer, like ten years or like fifteen mm-hmm. years. But now like everything's so fast paced, you mm-hmm. can see everything so easily, and mm-hmm. people get sick of things so fast because it's mm-hmm. like 
it's not there and then it's there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and it used to be like slowly, like people would start to, oh, that's coming popular and stuff like that. But now it's like no one has something. And then like one person, one influential person, and then everyone has it. So then it's like people are like, oh, that's not cool anymore. And then it like goes to the next thing. So Mm -hmm. now it's like, I don't know how the world is going to keep up and how girls and stuff like that are going to keep up with mm-hmm. having to change themselves constantly. And yeah. like, it seems like it's going to, I don't know yeah. how it's going to get better, but it needs to. Yeah, definitely. Cause it's hard to keep up with. And I mean, it's just a lot of stress and it's like, I just hate it. Like I hate it. And I, for me, you know, on Instagram and stuff, like I try to be so transparent. Like obviously I do photo shoots for my brand. It's so different because I am a brand and I'm yeah. not just like a day to day you're like lifestyle influencer. Like that's not what my page is, you yeah. know? Um, so I'll obviously like my whole page is curated, but I try like cause I want my feed to be pretty because that's what brings clients in. That's what people look for on my page. So my page is extremely curated. Yep. Because I'm a brand, it has to be. If I was a lifestyle influencer, it'd be way different. Like my personal Instagram, like I literally post when I want to post. I don't post when I don't want to post. And it's very more natural and authentic. Um, But on my like stories on my brand page, I try to be super authentic and genuine and present Mm -hmm. because that's where I can really like show the real me. So it's hard because I feel like people see like my Instagram feed and they probably are like, Oh, this girl's probably like stuck up or perfect or whatever they think I am. And then they come to my stories and they're like, Oh, she's not, you know? Yeah. And so I like to have that balance. But the other day I posted on my story and I was just talking about like not using filters and just like the Paris filter. We love her. It doesn't change your face. It just brightens your photos and like makes you look glowy. But like the face changing filters I have a huge problem with because personally I feel like it sets a standard, you know, that we're not good enough looking without a filter on and like it causes body dysmorphia. It causes us to want to look the way the filter looks like it's just not real life. And I feel like it can be really toxic. Like, yes, they're fun, whatever. Like I understand you feel like I look like shit and I want to post a picture. I'm going to throw a filter on. But for me, since I am in the aesthetics industry and I am such a big advocate of self-love and loving yourself and the skin you're in. And like, I'm always telling my clients, like, don't let your acne define you. Don't let, you know, your pores or texture, hyperpigmentation define who you are as a woman. I feel like it's hypocritical for me then to go on my stories with, you know, a face altering filter that makes my lashes longer and my cheeks rosier and my face slimmer and my nose smaller, like to be like, selfie you know and then you know show that so I try to show like even when I look like fucking dog shit like you know that I'm not always perfect because then you go to my page like oh here she is all done up with makeup and her hair curled with a photo shoot that's so curated but then there is also that side of me on my stories where I'm like I literally this is what I look like day to day (laughs) like I just woke up like I have postpartum hair loss like my hair's sticking up so I try to really show that because I feel like if I wasn't that way then it would just be disingenuous. Like I look like that photo shoot one day a year or how many times I do a photo shoot a year. Like I don't look like that every day. I don't have my makeup professionally done every day. I don't wear clothes like that every single day. Like that's not real life, you know? it's not at all. So I really try to do that. And when I posted that post about like, I know I look like fucking shit right now. I don't care. Here it is. Like I want to be authentic and genuine and open with you guys on my page because I want you to be able to feel that you can do the same way because I remember there was one girl I followed, cannot tell you her name, but it stuck with me. Her face is like, I think she doesn't even use Instagram anymore because have you ever followed someone and you love them? And then like one day they just drop off the face of the earth and like their Instagram's gone. You're like, who was she? Like, no. Okay. Well, that happened to me. <laughs> You're like, I, no. also, I don't follow anyone that I don't like personally. Personally, know. no, that's true. Well, anyways, this one girl, she was the one that made me feel like it was okay to do stuff like this and you know really inspired me that like oh like I don't have to look perfect all the time because she would be like oh I woke up here's my big pimple like you know here's like my cellulite whatever like I don't care and I was like oh my god like she's so real like I never would have known she had cellulite because from her feed like she looks perfect you know like I if she didn't post that I would have never known and I have cellulite so I was like okay like that made me feel less alone and like okay this bitch is like fucking perfect but she also has cellulite like made me feel like I related to her more she was a real person she wasn't that just this like fake figure on social media and so when she started doing that that's when on my page I was like now I felt like she gave me permission to be me Mm -hmm. you know and then once I started doing that 
I mean, my following grew a lot because people related to me and they're like, they liked that content because I think everyone was so sick of everyone pretending to have this perfect life because we're just sitting on our phones watching all these people live this perfect life and like this beautiful, perfect day when in reality, you know, their husband might be abusive and their kid might like, I don't know, be failing his classes or like, you know, whatever family drama they have, you know. Um, but you would never have known that from their page. It looks like everything's perfect. So then you sit there, you compare your life and then you are felt less than, and then you are trying to obtain these goals that like, they don't even fucking have themselves. Like you're like trying to live up to something that doesn't even exist. That's just curated and fake. Like everyone has their own shit and social media is so toxic in that way that like we sit on the app all day. We go through these people's feeds. We you know, stalk different people. And we're just like, Oh my God, like their life is so perfect. But it's like, you don't know that. Like they show you the good parts. They show you it's the highlight reel. They show you the best parts of their life. And so I really value people in this industry and people on Instagram in general or social media in general that show the good and the bad, but it's such a fine line too, because I want to have a positive page. Like I want it to be positive, but I also think like life obviously isn't always great. Yeah. And I never want to trigger anyone, you know, and talk about things and be like, bitch, no one wants to see that. Like I get on social media to distract myself from all the bad things in the world. I get that. Yeah. But also I feel like sometimes there are things that like I do want to talk about that aren't like Mm -hmm. the most positive things, you know, that I want to share with my page because I just feel like no one will ever really truly relate to you or know you if you're only showing the good stuff people really bond in the hardest times like that's really what pulls the community together it's not the good things it's almost the bad things like the true the real the raw the ugly that nobody wants to talk about and it's made me feel less alone like there are things that I thought that I was the only person that went through certain things and then I'd post about it and my dms would flood with all of these messages of like you're not alone I do the same thing I'm the same way I'm the same way and then So it was almost like therapy for me too, you know, like I'm sure it helped them to hear it because I mean, you're not going to go to lunch with like your mom friends and be like, I had a panic attack last night. Like, you know, and they'll be like, oh, you know, you don't say that. You're like, oh yeah. So like we're going to Cabo next week and my husband just got me a new Porsche and, um, yeah, I just got these new Lulu legging, Lulu lemon leggings. Like, aren't they so cute? Oh my God, you should get this style. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like no one has these real deep combos Mm -hmm. anymore. So anyway, so what I posted was talking about how I just get these points in my life where I get severe anxiety and stress. And I just want to organize everything, every drawer, every crevice. Like I just want to clean it and make it clean because I feel like if I can control one thing, like my life is in control, Mm -hmm. you know? And it like literally eats me up like I, to the point where I just want to cry and scream and punch a hole in a wall. Like I get this like overwhelming anxiety that like I need to literally dump every drawer, clean it, wipe it down, reorganize it. And if I don't do that, like I'm going to have a panic attack. And I mean, I'm not even kidding. Like I get to that point where it's just so hard, so yeah. hard. And I posted about it and so many people were like, I do the same thing. I do the same thing. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm not alone. And I like cried about it. So I was like that to me was something that I never talked to anyone about, not even my own family, because I thought I was crazy. Like I thought like no one else is letting a fucking disorganized drawer cause them this much panic and stress. But I realized through therapy over the years that like it's not the drawer. No, it's like it's deeper than that. You feel like what's around you is representative of your life. So if like if the stuff around you isn't clean, pretty, like organized, like put together, you feel like your life is in disarray. Yes. And that like it manifested to everything else, like your work, mm-hmm. your family, everything else. Like you, your brain is making like a connection between your surroundings and like your self worth. Yeah. And everything else. And yeah. I mean, yeah, I feel like. Do you, you ever get like that? Mm, sometimes, but not really. I feel like. I can definitely have a messy room Mm -hmm. for a day or two, but then it'll get to me. But I don't know if like I would say that it ties in with like, I mean, I do feel like I feel like I can think better if I'm in a clean space and stuff like that. So I I do think that's true, but I don't know if it's necessarily to the point that Mm -hmm. you're trying to describe. But I feel like, I mean, everyone in your life who's close to you knows that you 
like everything to be very put together and mm-hmm. that stuff like that. And I don't think it's a problem. I think it if it helps you, yeah, it's a good thing at the end of the day. Like I know it it can verge on being debilitating and like not a good thing, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I mean, like if it, if something helps you, if it helps you to clean, if it helps you to do things. It's not like, I, I mean, there, I could be doing like math. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> like there are a lot worse vices to have than like organizing yeah. or stuff like that. So I, I mean, just think for me, I hate that it's so debilitating. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I wish it was just like, oh, like I would like this clean instead of like, no, like fucking has to be clean or like yeah. I will not be like I'm mentally no. not OK right now. And mm-hmm. I have to like go and clean everything and color organize everything and like. I think I get to the point where it's just so fucking extreme that it's just yeah, like I feel that. overwhelming. And then I don't even know where to begin. And I just feel like consumed by like this anxiety and just, yeah. it's just like, I go into this like dark hole, but it's not every day. Like no. I, it's like once a month I get like this and you know, it's mostly, I feel like it, I notice a trend of like when I feel like things are out of control in my personal life or like yeah. in work, then you're like you said, like I try to make everything else around me perfect because if my surroundings are perfect then like I'm perfect yeah I mean it's like I think it's when you get busy like we talked about on a couple podcasts Mm -hmm. ago like you had all this shit coming up at one time Mm -hmm. and then like it just stopped and then like two weeks later as it's like all coming up Mm -hmm. that's when you started to like do it again and that's when you that one or that's whenever you had that Instagram Mm mm-hmm story and you were doing it at home yeah you and Lance emptied out every drawer in the house yeah. and redid everything I think it it definitely and I think it helps when you can identify and self-aware yeah being more self-aware like noticing okay this stuff triggers this this mm-hmm. stuff is what's going on when I feel like it. I mean it's going to take a while to realize yeah. those things but once you start to realize what triggers and what like is causing you to feel like that yeah my phone's going the fuck off it's my dad i'm dead but yeah no i think like i feel like we talked about this on a couple podcasts ago but just being self-aware and like actively trying to just make it better because again like i said i don't think it's a bad thing to be organized and to Mm -hmm. be things but it's it's having that fine balance between knowing and not that basing it's not your self worth yeah. on how organized your house is. Yeah, like, like that doesn't knowing. define you as a person, doesn't define you as a mother, doesn't define you as a wife, it doesn't define you as like a friend. Like it's just sa- such a little thing. But yeah, and the same hard. thing applies to social media. Like because like if you're not curated or if you're not following the trends or if you're not doing any of these things just because other people are doing them it doesn't change anything about yeah. you. It doesn't make you less of a person. It doesn't make you like not cool. Like any of these things that social media makes you feel like and yeah. stuff like that. Like, it, like I don't do any of that shit. And I'm yeah. still cool. Damn right. I follow Tyler. I'm like, whatever he buys, I buy for Lance. Yeah, that is true. It's kind of hard, guys. <laughs> I can't be my own person anymore. I'm sorry. I'm just making Lance your little mini me. <laughs> He's bigger than me. I know. I'm now his mini me. That's so funny. (laughs) Well, I needed help with fashion because I fucked up and I gave him a shirt. That was funny. No. Okay. So Savannah started shopping for Lance because Lance does not care about style. He does not care about like nice clothes. He doesn't care about anything. Let me just say real quick. The thing about Lance that gets me is this man will have like five shirts that he goes in steady rotation. So like, okay. This is Lance. This is like his thought process. So he will wear a shirt, like the same shirt, like he'll wash it, but like he'll wear it until it literally is unwearable. Like it gets a hole. It's, you know, I'm not like that. I like all my shirts. I want them to last a very long time. So like I wear them once a month, you know, Mm -hmm. or like have several, like a lot of shirts so that I can wear them at different times. So I don't wear it to the ground. Yeah. Lance's process and thought process about clothing is you wear it till it's unwearable and then you buy new clothes. So you just wear like yeah. the same outfit until it like cannot be worn anymore. Like he mm-hmm. wears it to the ground, to the ground. I'm like, why? I'm like, I like this shirt on you. It's a good shirt. Like I'd like you to have it for 10 years or whatever, not 10 years, yeah. but like I'd like you for, to have it for like five years. So like, let's get you more stuff so that you yeah. can just, you know, wear different shirts mm-hmm. and then make, you know, if you don't spend so much time on one shirt, it'll last longer. Yeah. No, exactly. But so Savannah started buying him new clothes on her own going rogue. Not that she knows men's fashion. I don't. At all. And you guys all, okay, let me say, y'all know 
I like my florals. I like patterns. I like patterns. She likes I colorful. I love colorful patterns. Yep. I love statements. I love color. So she starts buying him these button up shirts that are really nice. I mean, I like a, I like some of the shirts from the brand. I, I like a lot of them, actually. But some of them err on the side of being a little fruity, <laughs> if you will. And so... But I didn't think we were. No, you didn't. And it, it's fine. I mean, like... They're not the worst. It just didn't, it didn't look good. But, you know, so we went to a dinner. Did we tell this on the podcast before? No. I don't, I don't know. But, um. Well, first so, I put him in it and Tyler looks at him first and he's like. I looked at Savannah. I looked at Lance. I looked back at Savannah and I said, he looks like he's interested in men. But Savannah gave it the green light. She I said, said, no, he doesn't. I yeah. said, text your group chat and ask them what they think. And everyone agreed with me, obviously. <laughs> with the girls and the gays. That's what the group chat agreed with me. But it was it was fine. Like, it, it wasn't the worst. She, ha- she had some worse shirts <laughs> in there than the one that he was going to wear. So we went to the restaurant. It was a steakhouse. And then we sit down. Savannah... And I both order, what is it called? I don't know. Cotton candy martini. Well, no, before we even ordered that, because they asked Lance first, remember? Was Lance, they were like, Lance, like, or they were like, what would you like to drink? And Lance was like, ah, I want like a cocktail. Yeah. And then they offered him a cotton candy martini, which is like not a very... Masculine drink. Not a masculine drink at all. Like, I don't think I've ever seen... A straight man order too, a cotton candy martini. Do you think it was because also you were there? Like if it was just me and Lance and he was in that flamboyant shirt, like do you think they would have offered him that? Or do you think they thought that y'all were the couple and I was just like y'all's bestie? I don't think so. Y'all literally have, a, we had Cyrus with us. Oh, we did. Well, what yeah. about us? You're like nanny. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think it was the shirt. I think they thought y'all were lovers. No, I think, well, if anything, they thought we were lovers because of the shirt. <laughs> Like the shirt plays in somewhere into the story because there's no way (laughs) the shirt is vital. Okay. So, and I personally don't wear flamboyant clothes. It's just not something that I'm, uh, patterns scare me. I've always been like a solid, very plain, clean look. Like that's just how I've always been. I just don't think I look good in patterns. I don't think I can pull them off. Yeah. And so Savannah realized that she may have fucked up a little bit. <laughs> when with... they offered the cotton candy martini, I was like, okay, y'all are right. <laughs> so then she was like, well, Tyler, what do you wear? And I was like, well, my favorite brands are like All Saints, Theory, stuff like that. So she just bought Lance every single piece of clothing from <laughs> all my favorite brands. And so now I'm like, oh, I have that shirt too. Oh, I love that one. I still haven't been able to buy that one yet. Nice. So Lance is living my dream. And he doesn't even appreciate it. And he doesn't appreciate it at all. And I'm like, and so... Lance could give two fucks about clothes and Tyler's over here like, I would literally bust my butthole wide open for that shirt. Yeah, exactly. Because he gets like, he gets like every shirt (laughs) in every color. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. It was funny because Savannah and I went shopping together. I don't even know what we went for, but we stopped by Theory. And she, I got a couple shirts and she got Lance a bunch of stuff. Um, and then we got home with our bags. And I brought mine in because we took Savannah's car. And then I needed, <laughs> to, bring, I needed to bring my clothes in so I could bring them to my car when I left. And Savannah's like, Lance, try on your clothes. And so he like walks off and then he walks in (laughs) and he is wearing this shirt and the buttons are literally (laughs) like pulled taut. Like it is like showing his chest. It is like, it is so small on him. And he goes, Savannah, what the fuck is this? Like, (laughs) why would you buy this for me? And we were both looking at it and we were like, is that really what the large looks like on him? Like, there's no way. And I was like, what size is that? And he goes, like takes it off looks at it and he's like it's a small and i was like that's that's mine <laughs> he got so embarrassed he was do you remember yeah. he was like i'm so sorry he's i'm like, so, so sorry yeah. for wearing your shirt tyler i was like it's fine he goes no one told me that you guys you got clothes too like 
they all the bags were together and i was like it's literally fine no, yeah, lance like, was so mortified he was like i'm so sorry for wearing your shirt like, do you want me to wash it i was like no like you're fine but yeah lance now has my whole style and i mean it looks good on him it's because y'all flamed me for making him look flamboyant okay well yeah I mean, the clothes are good. I, I can't I can't okay, hate on him. Would you not agree that like those types of shirts, like it's the way you wear them. You know, if you wear a flamboyant shirt, you have to have a certain kind of like swag with it, you know, to be able to wear it. No, you don't think so. I mean, I, again, like I so said, you just think I, like it's a gay shirt. Like that I shirt, don't know. like you don't think like a straight man that was like a little had a little more suave and swag with him yeah, could maybe. wear it and pull it off as a straight man. Maybe. I mean, I just don't like those types of clothes. Okay. I mean, it's cute on you and stuff like that, but like as like men's clothes, I've just never been interested in them, and I yeah. don't personally like them, so it's hard for me to. I feel you. No. What type of vibe mm-hmm. requires that shirt? Because I, I, I just I don't feel like I could ever pull it off. No, yeah, I can. I can relate. No, I can't. So I look great in patterns. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> fair. Fair. I look good in solid. I think you'd look good in some patterns. I wouldn't. I wouldn't spend money on it. You can wear one of Lance's extra large. Okay. Yeah. Coral shirts. It'll be like one of those like Balenciaga dress shirts. Yeah. That's what I'll wear. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. I was like, I was telling Savannah, we're gonna start like. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say this. You can say it. If it's horrible, we'll cut it out. <laughs> I was just gonna say like gaslight lance into thinking he like weighs way too much that way he loses a bunch of weight so i can share his closet with him no yeah that's funny it's not bad i mean it's not nice to gaslight people but i just (laughs) want to share his clothes like it's nothing about him i was like even though he looks great still need to just like make him feel or you can gain weight that's not happening (laughs) okay i'm sorry that's not happening we got a trip that i need to go on i cannot no that's so funny nope but anyways, I did to learn what? that we are a similar, if not the same shoe size. So that one was stored up here. I love that. <laughs> You're like, I remember yep. the, the North remembers or is it the South remembers? It's from Game of Thrones. I think it's the North remembers. Yeah, it's probably the North remembers. I don't know. It's don't been know. a while. It's been a while. But anyways, back to social media. We'll wrap this up. Um, I encourage all of you guys to stop using filters unless it's the Paris filter because we love her. Um, but like I'm talking about these face altering filters because it does create a fake sense. And don't even just do it for you. Do it for the younger generation that's looking at these things. And that's like my biggest fear for the young girls that are like seeing their how their face would look if they had bigger lips or like this or yeah. that. Like, you know, and then they want to get lip filler and like things like that. Like I... We don't know how much we inspire the younger girls. Actually, I feel like they're mean. And I feel like well, I feel the younger like- girls, like they know, I don't know. There's something, there's something about a 13-year-old girl. They're confident. Some, not all. But Well, to me, it's just like know? crazy that like back in our day, like have you seen those TikToks where it's like, yeah. What my Instagram photos looked like when I was 14, I 15. I was literally dancing to Kesha's <laughs> di- walk yeah. like a dinosaur yeah. with like. 3D glasses where you take the lenses out yeah. and my bangs were all the way to the side and I was wearing graphic tees. What was that place called? Delilah's. Like Delilah's. Do you remember Delilah's? Probably not. It was a girl's clothes shop. Delilah's graphic tees where it was like, the, remember the cat that like was like her tongue was out but it was like rainbow and it was like a toast cat. Okay. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I'm sorry. I had that shirt. Or like the shirts where it was like a bear and he the bear was wearing 3D glasses. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, no, I do like, know. I can picture it now that you're describing them. But yeah. um, Yeah, no. And then like pictures that like these teenage girls are posting now where they actually look like adults. And it's yeah. like, but I, they're just they're just trying to they're replicating what they see on social media. And like, it's like yeah. they can't even be kids anymore. Mm-mm. It's like kids grow up so fast now and they're exposed to so much Mm -hmm. that i don't know how the world's gonna it's so sad i mean it's crazy but i know it's people are losing their like innocence so fast oh yeah absolutely i don't even like know you can't be a kid anymore yeah i don't know how long innocence lasts anymore like i swear it's until you're like five years old six years old because that's when like you have your you get given an ipad and you're left to do what you want with Mm -hmm. it and I know I want to try to preserve 
Cyrus's innocence as long as I can. Yeah, well, but you don't also second, want them to be naive. It's just it's a hard yeah. fine line as a parent because it's like you want them to not be bullied by like being like the weirdo like yeah. kid left out that doesn't have TikTok or social media. Like, oh, it's weird. But then it's also like you want to protect them from these things. Well, the thing is, is like one, especially once they go to school, there's no more protection. Like, yeah, I mean, it's just that it is what they hear and see yeah. and everything. It's just like the friends they're with. It's it's so much. It's just yeah. so much stress. I don't even like thinking about it because it makes me sad. But um, it is crazy, though, I how mean, much social media does really you know, affect us. And like, that's why for me, like, I feel like us adults and like people now like do better for the younger generation so that they feel like they have a space to like be themselves. And I do feel like Gen Z is definitely more of like a loving, sensitive and accepting group of people rather than like our generation or a bunch of fucking assholes and millennials are just like millennials. But I feel like the Gen Z generation, I definitely think like bullying is less prevalent. I mean, I, from what I hear, I mean, just things have changed. Like I have a lot of teenage clients and, you know, I talked to them about high school and, you know, I talked to one of them really deeply about it the other day. I was like, what's like, do people, is it bullying? Like, is there a lot of bullying? She's like, there is some, she's like, but it's not like awful. Like it pretty much gets shut down like really quick. And I remember when I was in high school, I'll never forget this. I had a girl who would bully the fuck out of me every day after school. Like once four o'clock hit, like she was on Twitter, like she was on every app and it was because they wouldn't do anything about it. Like I went to the principal with my mom and dad and they're like, it's affecting her at school because she's posting all these things. Everyone that follows each other, they all, all, everyone follows each other. Everyone knows it's happening. They're like, well, if she's not tweeting these things and posting these things on campus during school hours, it's out of our hands. My mom's yeah. like, that's so fucking dumb because it's affecting her at school. Yeah. Like just because they posted it at 6 p.m. when she's at home doesn't mean it's not affecting her while she's on campus. And they're like, well, out of our hands. If it's not tweeted while they're in the building, like it's not our problem, basically. Yeah. And now it's like it doesn't matter if you do it in the middle of summer, <laughs> if one mm-hmm. school's out of session, it's Christmas break, if you do it at 2 a.m., yeah. like, if you say something about someone else, like, they're going to, it's and it affects them at school, Yeah, you're still going to get in trouble for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And so times have changed a lot when it comes to, I think, the, you know, superior, not superiors, um, superintendents or people in power at schools and stuff are very more, very much more sensitive to bullying and things like that. Yeah. And there's better rules about it and things like that. Because for me, I was just like, they were like, sucks. Get yeah. it, try to get her to bully you while you're at school and then we'll do something. Yeah. I just, I mean, there's so many things back in the day that just don't fly anymore. And we've talked about that before, but it's just like, I am, there's, there's a positive and a negative side mm-hmm. to like how woke things are getting like sometimes yeah it's a I'm little like, too much sometimes yeah <laughs> but I mean it, it, especially in situations like that and that's why I think like the filters and all this other stuff like people are going to start to realize more and more that like and that's why like authenticity wins over everything yeah and like people I mean I think it's even starting like just in the way of manifesting through like people are starting to do less makeup and people Mm -hmm. are starting to like care more about skincare and more about health and all these other things like I think we're getting back to a better place with it but it's like it you never know I think health and wellness and more natural is the trend right now like yeah I mean, I'm even on my own journey to becoming, you know, a healthier, more natural person. Like I'm trying to, you know, dissolve my lip filler. I'm yep. trying to get back to my natural hair color. I took my extensions out. Like yeah. I want to feel beautiful. Like, of course, I'm always going to get Botox. I'm always going to do yeah. skincare. I am not saying it's bad to dye your hair. I'm no. still going to get highlights. I'm just saying I'm trying to transition just to be a little bit more natural than I was. Like, I feel like it's like gaudy now to be super fake you know and I'm not judging anyone if that's like what you love like that's what you love but I think it now with the trends appears like kind of trashy yeah and just have like overfilled lips and you know be so fake like I think fakeness right now is trashy yeah and people like are leaning more towards that like natural beauty but still doing things to achieve that natural beauty Mm -hmm. but just being more comfortable in your skin and not wearing 10 layers of makeup and like hiding, you know, you know, from 
whatever. Like, yeah. I just feel like more natural is in. And like the skincare industry right now is a really good industry to be in mm-hmm. because everyone wants to look good without makeup on. Everyone wants to wake up and have low effort. It's like we do these things like we put in a lot of effort to look like we had no effort. You yeah. know, like that's kind of the trend right now is like yeah. get a lash lift so it looks like you're wearing mascara but you didn't yeah and you know get your brows microbladed and shaped so that like you can like wake up and look great and yeah. look like you didn't try because you did it it's already done you yeah. know so i think that's kind of where the trends are going now definitely is like more natural which i love i yeah. think it's a really good trend to like just see your inner beauty and outer beauty a little bit more and absolutely you know we all have a part to play if you think you don't like we do the somewhere somehow like you're influencing somebody and and we talked about that like you can have one follower if you're on social media you are an influencer it doesn't matter how many followers you have like I mean god there's people I follow from high school that will post like they ate at a restaurant and I'm influenced to go there because it looked good from their post you know Mm -hmm. so you never know who you're affecting when you're on social media. So just always be like cognizant of that and mindful of it. And, you know, yep, do good. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have any closing thoughts? No, I don't think so. I think that like, you know, I, I appreciate the naturalness. I don't think like there needs to be these high standards or anything anymore. Like it's, I like we've talked about it I've talked about it before but just that like social media is really good for a lot of things Mm -hmm. and we just need to as a community Mm -hmm. phase out the parts that aren't ideal and aren't positive for everyone like there's no reason to have them in there and I think like especially with like the face altering filters I loved when Texas banned that but now they like gave it back oh really I I didn't know that I don't mean I just what I've heard because I've seen people I follow that are in in Texas and use them So I don't know, but I just think, you know, I'm not against it. I mean, I am, but I'm not going to judge you if you do it. Yeah. It's not like we're saying like you're a fucking horrible person. If you use face altering filters, but just for me personally, my brand, what I advocate for, what I preach daily, it would be hypocritical of me to put a face altering filter on my own face. Yeah. And trust me, I still like filler. I still like Botox, like whatever, but I do think just loving yourself in the skin you're in, especially if you're an esthetician. Like, well, I just feel, especially like and normal people, it's different. But as estheticians that are preaching, like, love your skin, love yeah. the skin you're in, I feel like it is hypocritical of us to then go and, you know, which I mean, I get like maybe for like a fun photo, whatever. Like, I'm just saying my personal opinion is that we sh- as estheticians should be the ones to show our natural skin show how we look naturally and not yeah do that i mean i feel like for everyone like i feel like it is i feel like to do that especially all the time it's like really damaging to your self image yeah Yeah. no it's really damaging to your self image and like it's almost like it makes you when you look at yourself in the mirror like you're not you're not going to like what you see because you're, you're so used to seeing yeah, a, a different version of yourself. That's exactly, not even real. Exactly. And then like, you're always going to want to look like that. And it's like, there was nothing wrong with what you looked like in the beginning or what you actually look like. There's nothing wrong with it. It's like these filters aren't even realistic for how people are born to look. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like they're not, they change things. So a lot of them change them so drastically that it's like, no one looks like this naturally. Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, there, I don't think it's positive for anyone and it it changes your self image of yourself. And then like, and then it's like also like w- when you go out and you like meet people or like you do anything, it's like you, you don't, don't look, look like, that. like that. Like, I mean, not no shade or whatever, but like there are some people that I've seen on social media and then I meet them in person. And I'm like, that's not you. Uh, okay. Okay. I tea time. I have had clients come in that like I followed on Instagram like and it's like you know when people have like totally Elizabeth that's not anyone I'm just saying like that's their at name you know you don't really know like their real name or if they're like champagne and Chanel I'm not that 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 is a girl and that's not a client I just want to (laughs) say put that out there that's just I'm thinking of and like blogger Instagram names she is not a client of mine I love her page she's cute yeah um but you know what I'm saying like you don't really know their real name yeah you just know them by their Instagram handle you know like whatever like me uh, mine's not at savannah Bodo, it's at the dallas esthetician yeah. obviously like my name's all over my social media but yeah some people some don't people have that yeah. so i've had clients come in 
and didn't know that they're like this person I follow on Instagram, like, cause they don't look the same. Like yeah. they're not the same fucking person. Yeah. Like I would have like literally jaw dropped when one of my clients recently was like, Oh yeah, like this is my Instagram. And I was like, no fucking way. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> um, so I'm just saying and like, like, Oh Yeah. I totally knew that the whole time. No, like, definitely. Yeah, and, like but, I never want someone to think that of me. And I actually, yeah. the biggest compliment I've ever had from a client was when she came in, she was like, you're so much skinnier and prettier in person. Yeah, no, and I was like, of, that's so nice. No, I mean, a lot of the times when we're out to dinner and someone sees you or something like, not that it happens all the time, but like, we'll go out and other estheticians just happen to be at the restaurant or like something like that. Mm-hmm. I feel like they always tell you like, oh my gosh, you look even better in person. And I feel like that's a really nice thing to say because like or you look the exact i've heard you look exactly exactly like your skin looks exactly like i've had clients say that to me they've come in like wow your skin's like actually that good in person you know and it's like i think which is sweet (laughs) yeah but it's also like it's better to give people and show people what you actually are because it's the real you and then they're not going to have like some other expectations or anything when they meet you and then it's like a negative reaction on their end and like you and then you too are gonna feel nervous yeah Yeah, but you're gonna feel nervous because like meeting people and like you can't fucking face your face face, tune in real life yeah like it's you're gonna be what you are and so like you're gonna like not doing that stuff you're not gonna affect your self-image you're not gonna be nervous or anxious when you're going out in public and people Mm -hmm. are gonna see you for who you really are which was never bad in the first place Mm -hmm. and like it's just like I don't know. It's like, just, just be who you and are. And two, something that like really sat with me. I don't know. I guess it might be just from becoming a mom. But like when I used to like face tune my photos, because I did yeah. 100% always. And I would look back and be like, I'm going to look back at these memories and it's not me. Yeah. No, like these are not, it's not what my face looked like. No. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I have all these photos of these memories and they're all face tuned. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, that's not, you know what I'm saying? It's not really me. I'm going to look back and have all these memories that are not my actual face or like what I actually looked like. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I just feel like as a society, like we just need to love ourselves. And I get like maybe fixing like a blemish on your face or whatever. Like if you're obviously not an esthetician and you're just like a normal human listening to this. Like, yeah, I get that. Like if you have a big ass pimple on your face, like blur that shit out. Like, yeah. And it's like, that's not, that's not what you look like every day. It's not like that pimple is permanently on your face. So like, it's not, it's not life changing to like patch yeah. over a little pimple like but i mean that was i see these dramatic later, ones yeah. people like literally like reducing their neck size like kim kardashian yeah, just recently did that like literally like things i wouldn't even think about like i was yeah. like after i saw that video it made me self-conscious about how thick my neck is and i was like is my <laughs> neck thick like so it's like it's a negative thing like don't do that <laughs> yeah but no just love yourself love yourself i mean it's hard I have a hard time with it. Savannah has a hard time with it. It's not easy, but like the more you do it, the more it's like you don't even think to go and like I would never think about downloading Facetune now. I mean, like back when I was in high school and I had horrible acne and like all these other things, like it was like I didn't really know, but I would send it to like a friend or something who used Facetune all the time and be like, "Can you just like fix this just a little bit?" Yeah. But like now, I would never even think about that. And I mean, yes, my skin's better and stuff like that now, but it's just like. I don't know. It's I it's just different lens of life that you yeah, have. And now. it's like, I don't want I don't want my biggest fear is like, I would never want to one change my self image and two like go out in public and be like, mm, this is not what I look like. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it, I, it's terrifying. But, yeah. Or like the worst is like if you edit all your photos and then you go to someone's tagged photos and you're like, <laughs> it's funny. I never look at people's tagged photos. I Maybe do. I should start doing that. It's so funny. <laughs> is that mean? <laughs> Maybe. No, maybe a little bit, but it's like, it's not your fault. Yeah, that's true. Like, and, and not like normal people, but like influencers, influencers that you follow that yeah. like they post something. Or like someone like or saw like, them on the street and took a, like a fan photo with them yeah, or something like that. Yeah, you're like, why? For what reason? Like, yeah, and you're like, mm, I didn't realize that. That's a good way to... Find the fakes. Fakes. <laughs> but I, I'm pretty sure on my page, and you can probably do it with anyone, like you, I have mindset to where like I have to approve it. Oh. To where it, I get... That'll no. show up on my Everyone photos. Just, it's so funny. Oh my God. Speaking of that, speaking of Facetune. So <laughs> after I have to the pee seminar, so bad. okay, I'll, we're almost done. Okay. After the seminar, after people like took photos with me and everything, I was looking at all my tagged photos. This person, I have to find it. They 
fucking face tuned the fuck out of my face. And I was like, who is this? And it was me. And I was like, there's no way. And it was just so funny. I was like, well, thank you for, I guess, like, that was, like, nice. Because I guess she... Did she do it well? No, it does not look like me. Okay. I was like, who the fuck is this? And it was me. Well, and I, I was wish like, that girl who posted the picture with me facetuned me. Because I think that's honestly one of the look, worst pictures just, I've taken in the past five years. Just zoom in on years. that picture of me. Oh. <laughs> like, so facetuned. Like, I look like a caricature. Yeah, honestly, like, I don't know who posted it, but why do they look more natural than you? I feel like they just, maybe she's like, maybe I look busted in that picture and she was thinking, let me just be student Savannah a little bit. Yeah, I don't think. No, it's definitely not my face because I have all the other pictures from that day and definitely face tuned. I mean, it's not the worst. Well, it's but pretty fucking bad. Yeah, it's. It's pretty fucking bad. Let's just be real. It's pretty fucking bad. Yeah. I mean, she didn't like change any like proportions of your face. No, she, she just, just like blurred my entire face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been more offensive if she like. I, yeah, she was like, she was like. Job it up. Yeah, no, that no, would, that I, that's funny. kind of what I was I just saw and I was so. like, please don't face to me. I didn't say anything, obviously. Like, I don't yeah. care because I didn't do it. But yeah. it was just awkward. I'm like, damn, she thought I was busted. She face tuned me. Um, but anyway. That's all I have today. Yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got. I um, hope you guys enjoyed this episode and learned something new. And yeah, love yourself. Lance, <laughs> give me some of your clothes. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got to say. That's so funny. All right. Well, we love you guys and we'll see you next week. Bye, y'all.